Hey guys, I'm Shirk, and that's your day in Raid Shadow Legends. I'm not alone. I'm joined by Scratch, AK47. Scratch, what's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> What's up? What's up? Ash doing pretty good, man. Doing pretty good. Excited to get a live arena in game. You know, we're getting that OP champion who's gonna be a monster everywhere. So I'm I'm definitely pretty excited to, yeah. to get a hang of it. Quintus the Triumphant. Quintus the Triumphant. We'll actually talk about his whole kit in just a moment here. But before we jump to that, man, I wanted to have you on uh the channel to talk to you about this live arena because I gotta be honest with you, man. Uh instead of just reacting to the video like I normally do here, I figured having a conversation with you would be the best route because I have uh, I have mixed emotions, man. I feel, first of all, like really excited at the same time. I have some reservations. So I figured we could break this down to the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I actually want to start out with how you feel about the arena in general, like live arena in general. How do you feel about the actual format in terms of uh, the snake draft where you pick the first person gets a, who wins the coin flip, gets to pick the first champion, and then the next person gets to pick two, and then you pick two, 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 one, or whatever, you know? Do you like that format? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. Like, I feel like the way as well, how you're going to ban a champion, it, it, it can be a mess, you know? I feel like it was better if you were picking your champions, Ban, ban a champion, and then you are able to pick another one. Because the main issue that's going to happen, if you're only putting one nuker in, everybody's going to ban the nuker. And then you're going to be left in there, hanging in the fight forever, you know? So it's, I'm, I'm not such a massive fan of the, the way of uh, picking the champions and stuff by the looks of it, you know? Well, well, don't you think that, just to play devil's advocate there, don't you think, Scratch, that it could just, a different meta will naturally evolve where, you know, defensive-based nukers and stuff like that will even be inherently more valuable because, to your point, you can't make a team too one-dimensional, kind of the same strategy that we use in the PvE version of PvP right now. Mm. In a way or another, yeah, but the main thing is that you're still going to have to, you're definitely going to have to select two nukers. If no... Pretty much everyone with a, with a bit of a brain, they're gonna ban your nuker, and you're gonna be you're gonna be uh, dead eventually. Even if it's gonna take them a bit of extra time to kill you, considering that you won't have damage on your side, yeah, they're still gonna win the fight. So I do think that a lot of different uh, teams will evolve out of here, just for the simple fact that if if you're planning to to bring in tons of uh, uh, awesome champions, you know, like the the super strong champions, people can just ban one of them and then a lot of things will have to change in your team, in your mindset. You're not going to be able to just do the easy thing and, okay, I'm going to bring in Duchess and she's going to carry me through uh, through the fight, you know? So yeah. definitely mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of teams will... Uh, we will will come out to light from from here, you know. Yeah, man. I mean, between the the drafting, between on the uh, the new legendary, right? He looks really amazing. Mm. Uh, and uh, also, the the did you catch the matchmaking is going to be based on uh, your performance, aka I'm assuming your win percentage, both recently and of all time. How do you feel about that? Because that that's something I don't hear a lot of people talking about so far. But I was intrigued by that. Uh, I think that if they hit the, I mean, this is a big if scratch, right? But like if mm, they hit the nail right. on the head between finding that perfect balance of a good win percentage and overall strength of the account and the champions they have, I think that could be a, a perfect blend, but they have to really hit it there. How do you feel about that? So I think, it, I think it's a good thing because people won't want to go on lower tiers to uh, have easier fights, you know, just to farm the Great Hall because you're going to need the bigger medals. So that will push the people that are strong to go in the higher tiers and yeah. fight there. I think, like, what's going to happen will be the very first few weeks it's gonna be where awful. everybody is in the same tiers. And, uh, for example, I'm going to win 20 fights. You're going to win 20 fights. Uh, your account is super uh, developed compared to mine. And you might get matched with me and you're going to wreck me completely. But I feel like that's only going to be an issue at the very beginning where all the Krakens, whales, free to play, low spenders are kind of like in the same in the same pot, you know. But once once all the the big spenders and stuff they start moving separate. up in the higher tiers yeah. to separate exactly, I feel like it's going to be a good system, much better than a system based on your level. Because if you're going to take it, okay, my power, your power, your level, my Can't level. Do that. Yeah. No, that's gonna be a. There's massive, too many ways to to abuse that system. There's too many exactly, you know gimmicks yeah. and, and workarounds there. You know you could not max fully max a champion or something and load them up with mm -hmm. god tier gear. There's so many different things you could do to skirt that system. Make a new account and just build five champions and make them or six champions and make them all incredible and and just you know lay waste to the uh, the new players out there. I want to get your thoughts on before we move on to the the bad and the ugly here. Uh, what do you think about the new artifact sets? 
So the artifact sets, they look interesting. Uh, the one that is kind of like a reflex with a bit of speed is going to be decent. It might be easier for us to get that instead of farming reflex from uh, from the ice golem, you know? Yeah, impulse. But I feel like yep. they're kind of like trying to to counter a bit Warlord, Yumekos, and other champions that lock you out. And I feel like the chance of uh, reducing the cooldown of a skill is just too low to be impactful, you know? Like, yeah, you're getting the 12% speed, you're getting the 30% chance, but if they really plan to have a bit of an impact against Warlord, Dumekos, which they're still the top of the meta since the beginning of the game, yep. uh, they, they do need to raise that a bit up. Like a 50% chance to reduce the random of a skill, it would have been awesome, you know? Yeah. It, it would have been a bit more impactful. What about the zeal? 25% extra damage in 0. 0.7 plus 7.5 damage for every 25% HP that the mobs have left. Do you think that's like more of a clan boss type thing? I think that can be uh, very powerful uh, on specific champions as well in arena. It really depends uh, how much ignore defense the champions have in their skills, in their kit, you know, and it's conditional to be on full HP if you want to get its full potential from that set. I feel like it's definitely going to have some uses. We Same. definitely need somebody to to make the math on it, you know. And to it test it out. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. It's it hard to just seeing that to, to kind of equate to both those, those, those sets to compare them to the best that we have right now in game. It's difficult, but my intuition is the same as yours that we will actually uh, find some usage out of both those sets. So uh, my last thought is the arena bonuses. And I guess this kind of gets into the bad, right? In some ways, right? So mm. how do you feel about Plarium? Make, I want to make sure I word this right. Plarium making us play PvP in order to progress our accounts sufficiently in PvE. In other words, they're adding all this new difficult content, Iron Twin, Sand Devil, uh, Doom Tower, or uh, harder stages rather in regular dungeons. Uh, and they're giving us they're making us play arena, essentially. I think that most players right now, Scratch, play regular, traditional, classic arena simply to develop their great hall for other areas of the game. I love PvP. I know that you love PvP, but I don't think we're in the, my, in the majority there. So how do you feel about this separation? And also, how do you feel, feel about this sneaky little tier grades? <laughs> grade 2, grade 3, grade 1 on these uh, on these upgrades. Yeah, I'm... I don't think it's, it's, it's a good idea, honestly, but it feels like most of the games, and I'm, I'm talking here from playing other games as well, which are kind of like in this sort of genre, they all tend to do this to ensure that everybody will play their PvP, you know, mm -hmm. regardless of if you like it or not. So they kind of make it a, a must to, to do it. My main issue is that, again, the, the regular Great Hall, it took us years to develop, right? So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a spender as well, so... I was able to max my Great Hall a bit faster than the majority of people. But this Great Hall, it seems like, again, it will take us a couple of years or so yeah. to, to max it out, you know, just by if seeing that. how many medals you need in order to, to do a level, especially at the at the higher levels, you know? Yeah, that's what I was saying. And, like, it, it, they, they grade each area too. Potion Keep is grade one, so it's easier to upgrade, right? Which does, yeah, yeah, I guess, exactly. make sense. But then you go down and it's like, okay, like the areas like Clan Boss and Hydra, they're grade three. So they're going to take super forever to, to upgrade. I, I'm not. I'm never gonna bother with the potion keeps. Like my main priority, right? probably. Will, yeah, my main priority. I, I'll be honest. I think it should be main priority for everybody. Should be a Hydra and Clan Boss. It really depends what your account is, uh, how much you're struggling with the regular Clan Boss. Getting the rewards from the regular Clan Boss is absolutely essential. Shards, books, etc. The best. The best place in the game next to the Doom Tower. But then it's Hydra. Hydra will have new difficulties coming out, which will definitely require us to have higher accuracy, higher speed, higher resistance, more tankiness. So I feel like my main priority will be Hydra battles just for the simple fact that I know that the next difficulty is, is around the corner as well, you know? <laughs> yeah, and they added the ignore defense uh, air, uh, you know, tree as well, which is pretty cool, right? So are yeah, you going to go funny. ignore defense arena as your first first thing before? Probably I will I will try to prioritize uh, that and maybe speed and uh, accuracy resistance. That's kind yeah. of like what will give you the the best the value all around. Stuff. Yep. I ignore defense is not going to be very important on clan boss. Like it's not going to make an impactful difference. It's not as impactful on as uh, in different areas. Like if you're doing waves, if you're doing arena, you know. But uh, ignore defense will be very powerful on uh, 
ignore the uh, on a uh, waves like on the dragons on the fire knight on the ice column just to allow you to melt those waves faster so that would be very very important for uh, for those dungeons but for clan boss i would personally wouldn't necessarily prioritize that i would definitely prioritize the attack over the ignore defense on clan boss you know yeah for sure okay so we talked about our concerns i agree you know it's it's hard to say that they should totally separate it because it does feel mm. like in every game, this is the way they do it. That doesn't make it right, by the way, but it does feel like this is kind of how they incentivize more players, thus having enough players to actually make the game mode meaningful. Uh, mm. However, it does feel, I can see the pain, right? Of like, listen, man, I enjoy what I enjoy, especially maybe as a new player or new-ish player, right? Where you feel like you're just trying to make progress and just get like decent artifacts, get your champions to level 60, which still takes a long time. And now they're adding like, okay, they're going to throw us in the in the pit of whales in Krakens uh, to have to, you know, make further upgrades in a brand new Great Hall that's going to take another couple of years to accomplish. So I see the frustration there. I think that it all comes down to a they need to institute some sort of a catch-up mechanic in my opinion like i would like to see the a regular tr the traditional classic great hall make it like double the medals or something right like don't don't you agree that they need if you're starting playing now don't you feel like it's just gonna take you forever or literally a hundred thousand dollars to catch up <laughs> i definitely think they should do something an event right like let's just because we have all these arena tournaments which are completely rubbish like the rewards are beautiful you're not getting anything of them so what i i think would, would be great if they if they would start doing is to do double the medals in this event you know like yes do yes arena you're yes. gonna get double the medals do live arena you're gonna get double the medals and that will allow people to do it and take and advantage of seen, those times yeah exactly like you want to save 100 gems 200 gems that you would normally spend on different things just focus those gems on that day you know and then you're gonna get extra medals and would be great for live arena as well and to to allow you to do it because even if you're a kraken right like if you're a kraken you still have a limited amount of tokens that you can purchase for live arena yes they do get more expensive free to play one or four to purchase every every six refills daily but they will have a chance to purchase two three refills during that day you know without breaking the bank on their gems so they won't get affected during fusions and stuff and that would make them more interested into the game mode, you know? Yeah, totally agree. I really hope that Plarium comes out and addresses some of these long-time issues along with this new content because I think that, I think it's safe to say, I don't want to speak for you, Scratch, but I think that this game mode, the foundation of it, it's not going to appeal to everybody. People who don't like PvP are not going to like this, right? Why would they? But... I think it's exciting and I'm I'm really I'm I'm really excited for it. Like I'm not going to apologize for that, right? But Same, yeah. <laughs> I also think that dude they need to address like some of these ever present issues that have been there for years to help alleviate the pain of of non-big spenders and your common player. And and that kind of takes me to two po topics that I want to cover on the ugly here, the good, the bad, and the ugly scratch to fit the theme of the thumbnail. Uh Tell me about the time periods of this game, of, of PvP, of live PvP. How do you feel about them making four different, you know, what are they, two-hour segments each uh, throughout the day? To me, on the good side, I totally understand, right? They need to make a game mode that people are actually going to find matches on that, that match their skill level. And if they have that more refined time period... Well, that means that you're probably, hopefully, going to be matched with somebody who's closer to your actual strength, right? Uh, mm. Because it's more limited. However, you know, that does make it feel like, dude, I don't know. I mean, you get a kid on the way, right? You've got a, uh, you know, you get a life outside of Raid Shadow Legends. I have, a, I have a job as well. I have a family. And, like, right now, man, I try to make Raid work it in my time frame, right? I mean, like, it's not a full-time job and stuff. And I like grinding it sometimes when I have the time, you know, maybe on the weekends or whatever. But, boy, having to set my clock, bro, to, like, certain time windows where I feel like I'm obliged to go in and play, or maybe I'll fall behind. Ooh, you know, that does not sit too well with me. How do you feel about it? Yeah, 100% uh, agree on it, man. Like, just being open only four times a day and at the specific times like that is definitely not great. Like, if, if you pay attention at the times, you're going to notice that most of the times that are available for 
uh, each one of the time zones are during work work hours, man. Like during the day when people are at work. Yeah, you might be able to catch one at the evening. But how you said, you have a family, you have other things to do. And that might be your family time, you know. And it's not great the way they're planning it. I think personally, the best thing would be one hour open, one hour close, one hour open, one hour close. And like that, you have it open 12 times a day and people will be able to play it like that. Because if if I log in now in the game, I'm going to do my clan boss, I'm going to do my uh, faction wars, I'm going to do my doom tower. That takes me one hour, one hour and a bit. I still catch half an hour open of live arena. Maybe I'm going to be able to, to throw in a couple of battles, you know, and that then I'm, I won't be so pressured about, okay, I got to set an alarm because in two hours, Arena will open. It's only going to be there for two hours. And then I won't be able to play it for the rest of the day because either I'm working, either I'm sleeping, either I go to see my grandma, either God knows <laughs> what we're, we're about to do. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of like how it is. Yeah, dude, I don't know. Okay, so that brings me to the next question, right? Because hmm. even if we do every other hour, my question to you is, is for me, and I could be wrong on this, but my first intuition is that a half an hour per battle time limit seems long to me, actually. Yep. What about you? Like, I would like to see it. I mean, I know this is a half mobile, half like PC client game at this point, you know. But to me, the magic of mobile games, if I look at all my faves, no matter what genre, is that you can pick them up and play them like in a doctor's waiting room or whatever. Or or wherever you may be, like, at, you know, whatever, in a three minute break somewhere, five minute break, and you can have a meaningful, fun experience. But a half an hour, really, do you think it will be conducive, A, to players kind of stalling to annoy or building super tanky teams that you just don't, you're going to want to like shut the game off? Or or do you think that's an ample amount of time? How do you feel about the, the half an hour time limit? I think it's way too long as well. Like if you if you have 15 seconds per move, you know, like if you're going right now in a, in a normal arena fight, right? I'm going to take my move. I might one shot your team and it's game over. I might not. And yep. then I got to take three, four more moves, but then it's done. So that should roughly take around 10 minutes top you know even if both of the players are engaging and are doing moves that will definitely uh kind of like encourage people not to become trolls and just waste people's time 10 minutes you know we go in the fight i'm looking you down you're looking me down or whatever we're doing our moves but it shouldn't be longer than 10 minutes man like 15 seconds to to to, to get our moves done is more than a more than enough and if, if it's longer than 10 minutes, something is just wrong there, you know? <laughs> I agree with you. I agree, man. I And I think that if you go MIA, so like if you go MIA, your team will, for three turns, your team will be put on auto until you come mm. back and then it will go back on manual. Don't you think again, maybe I'm missing something here, but doesn't it, doesn't it make more sense that if you miss three freaking turns, you forfeit? <laughs> like Exactly. That's exactly It's live how it arena. Be. You know what I'm saying? That's exactly how it should be, not dragging people for 30 minutes no. just to both of them lose you know if if i if if i miss three moves that's it game over i lost the fight it's, yep. it's on me i started an, a life a live match i should be there to do it you know yes yes all right well mm -hmm. hey man i think those are all my opinions those are all your opinions so far from everything that we know at least i will share the uh the champion really quickly here let me just put my Speaking of auto, let me put my team on auto in the background here. Uh, share the champion. Uh, so he's attacking, uh, well, place an extra hit. The target has no buffs. If the attack is critical, repeats attack once on the A1. Attacks one enemy, removes all buffs. Places a decreased defense on the target for two turns. Damage afflicted by the skill cannot de decrease by passive skills. He's kind of like the anti-Taurus uh, to some respect there. Resets the mm -hmm. cooldown of the A3. If the attack kills an enemy, an AoE, increase attack, increase crit damage on this champion. Resets the cooldown of strip away if the attack kills an enemy, which is a cool kind of, you know, counter reset cooldowns. And then each of the champion skills deals additional pure damage the amount of pure damage dealt is equal to 10 percent of the target's max hp for each buff on them the additional pure damage dealt will ignore shields overall like any quick thoughts on this champion i think he's going to be probably crazy thoughts yeah he he will be very solid it really depends as well what sort of multipliers, multipliers right, as the, always the, right <laughs> as always exactly yeah. the only problem is for a high-end arena you're gonna get shipped till you're gonna get bored of it with the a2 you know like it's unresistible cannot be blocked so your chance to get shipped is like huge because you remove the buffs as well you know so yep, yep, the a2 yep. is, is a bit of a problem for the current meta i think he's gonna be very powerful in clan boss as well like he's gonna bring his own increased attack increased crit damage he's gonna smack pretty hard the a1 can become a a, 
a multi-hit, you know, places an extra hit if the target has no buffs, that's going to be great on clan boss, repeats oh, yeah. the attack uh, if the critical, uh, if the A1 hits with a crit. Then the passive as well deals 10% of the target's max HP for each buff on them. Usually the clan boss will have a buff increase attack. So if you're not taking block buffs or a different champion to strip the, the buff, it does it with the A2. But if you're kind of like targeting to use this on the stun or stuff like that, after you're kind of like doing most of the damage, he can uh, he can work in that as well, you know? Plus the yeah, defense down too. So. Well, we'll definitely have play he, tests he for this champ. Yeah, we'll definitely have playtesting on this champion on both our channels, I'm sure. Speaking of both our channels, guys, go ahead and ch head out to Scratches right now because we're about to do a collab over there as well. Scratch, thanks again for joining me on the channel, man. Appreciate it. Not a problem. All right, guys, let us know how you feel about Live Arena in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and as always, take care, guys.